Hi, I'm Stanley Stewart, and I have a question for you. Why is it that you have such crappy friends? Why is it that you do a lot of favors for your friends, and they don't do a lot of favors for you? And why is it that you spend a lot of interest caring and understanding your friends, and they don't really care about you or want to understand you or your problems? The reason has to do with the way your mind is formed and why you feel emotions in the first place. In this video, you're going to learn why your friends don't seem to care about your problems, why being nice and doing favors is actually hurting you, and how to get your friends to care and want to understand you instead. I was suicidal for 16 years, and a large part of that was not being able to attract great friends and great relationships into my life. I could never tell anyone I was suicidal for fear of pain or of them judging me. And if someone did kind of figure it out and would ask me what's wrong, I would lie and say nothing, even though I felt very hollow and empty on the inside. I'd always fantasize about someone pushing a little bit further and getting me to confess and admit to being suicidal, and then them being very understanding and accepting. But if I did try to hint to friends that I was suicidal in order to get them to push, instead they would just feel very uncomfortable and change the subject or even leave the room. This only made me feel more isolated and alone. It took me a long time to figure out how to attract great friends and great relationships into my life. I read a lot of books and went to a lot of seminars and really just spent a lot of time and effort into understanding relationships and why some people seem to make friends effortlessly where others do not. And after many years, things started to click for me. I started attracting great friends who really cared for me and wanted to understand my problems. I started getting into great relationships with amazing people who thought the world of me. And I'd like to teach you some of the stuff I have learned so that it'll be a little easier for you and you won't have to spend as much time and money into gaining acceptance and understanding. So the first thing we want you to learn is why you have such crappy friends and why you're much nicer to your friends than they are to you. But before we do that, we have to go back a little bit and really dig deep into the basic motivators for human action. So there's three takeaways I want you to understand. The first is that your brain's job is to control your actions. The second is that your brain does this by giving you emotion. And the third is that the end goal is to help you survive and reproduce. So you evolved so that every part of you has a purpose. Your muscles help you move. Your skin protects you from the outside. And your brain, by which I mean your subconscious, unconscious brain, controls your actions. And it does this by giving you emotion. So when it wants you to run away, you feel fear. When it wants you to have sex, you feel arousal. And when it wants you to bond with other humans, you feel neediness and a longing for acceptance. Whatever action your brain wants you to take, it has an emotion to make you take that action. And most people just follow their emotions pretty much most of the time, yourself included. Yes, you have a logical brain, and you could act off that brain instead, but this isn't what really drives most people. 99% of all human action is because someone feels an emotion such as they want someone to like them and they just act off of that emotion. Again, yourself included. So, for example, I really like comfort food and I like to eat to affect my emotions. Now, this has been something I've always struggled with and sometimes I'm not doing all that great to keep the weight off. But especially when I was suicidal, if I was feeling particularly depressed, I would think to myself, gee, if I go eat something, I'd get that instant hit of happiness and I would feel a little bit better. Now, that may sound 
like a logical thought process to me, but really it was the emotional driver to eat something. If I didn't feel as though eating something was to cause happiness, I would never have taken the action. Similarly, you really want to feel understood and to gain acceptance. And you're probably thinking to yourself, gee, if I could just find someone who's accepting and understanding of me, well then, I go that much further to getting out of being suicidal and that much closer to happiness. And this may sound like a logical thought process to you, but what's really going on is that you have emotional need of understanding and acceptance. If you didn't feel that emotional need, you wouldn't be seeking understanding or acceptance. In other words, you wouldn't be taking action. It's the emotion that is causing you to take action and seek understanding and acceptance. Now, I'm not saying don't seek understanding and acceptance, but instead that we should use this knowledge instead of fighting against it. So for example, you have an emotional need to understand and accept your friends. If we could just evoke the same need inside your friends, they will want to understand and accept you. Then if, for example, you tell them you're suicidal, instead of them feeling uncomfortable, they will feel secretly happy because they have a need to understand you and you've just given them a chance to do that. In order to learn how to evoke these emotions, you must first go back to why your brain triggers emotions in the first place. Your brain is a product of millions of years of evolution and as such, it's finely tuned to help you survive and reproduce. This is how evolution works. That which helps you survive and reproduce sticks around, where that which doesn't help you survive and reproduce goes away. But your brain isn't helping you survive and reproduce in the modern world. No, evolution is very slow and has not caught up with all the advances society has made. Instead, it helps you survive and reproduce tens of thousands of years ago when we were living in a 50-person tribe. Similarly, other people's brains best help them survive and reproduce tens of thousands of years ago when they were living in a 50-person tribe.